CPUs love fast RAM. And when it comes to gaming, games do give you higher frames per second with faster memory. But there is a cutoff point, particularly a price to performance cutoff point. And that is exactly what we're going to go over here with Project 7. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that every RAM manufacturer and every motherboard manufacturer has what they call a QVL. That is a qualified vendor list. And here is the QVL for the MSI motherboard that I am going to use. You can find this under compatibility. And then I went ahead and select 11th generation because we have an 11th gen core i7. You can sort this however you would like. I don't particularly find the QVL here to be as useful as it probably could be. But if I sort by speed and speed alone, we can see very high speeds here for RAM, and it does dwindle down pretty fast. Now, the speed range that I'm particularly interested in is this 3600, and I'll get to why here in just a bit. So one place to look is your motherboard manufacturer. However, when you select the actual piece of RAM that you're looking for, it's very helpful to also look at their QVL. Here you can see the QVL on the G-Skill website for this particular module set that I'm looking at under MSI, under the Z490, which is the chipset for Project 7, right here is our motherboard. So we know we are in good company and it should, at least in theory, work. But this gives you a little bit more assurances that somebody did test at least enough to be able to advertise for it, which is a pretty high bar, believe it or not. Okay, so when you actually see a piece of RAM, you're gonna be greeted with a sticker or information like this, a bunch of numbers, and there are some dashes, and everything seems to be in the particular order, and unless you know what you're actually looking at, it's hard to make any sense of all of this. So let's break it down a little bit, and we do have to get into some math. I hope that's not gonna scare you away. The first number you're looking at here is 4,000. That is the frequency at which the RAM operates. That is the clock speed, the cycle time, the all the numbers that we use for CPU and GPU. It's the same concept. It's how fast information is going from one to zero and back and forth. It's a cycle. So in this instance, 4,000 is telling us the speed of the RAM. Now, the next number that you're going to see is... CL. This stands for CAS latency. CAS latency is a critical, critical number. Every other calculation that is going to be made by this RAM is going to be impacted by this CAS latency. This CAS latency deals with the ability to access certain portions of the data in order to start other processes. So this is the first delay, if you will, in the entire process of either writing something to your RAM or reading something from your RAM or finding something from your RAM. This is the first number. 16 is actually really good. And here is the math on this. What you take is the frequency, remove those two zeros, and then you're left with 32. If you divide 32 by two, you get 16. That is considered first word latency, and 10 nanoseconds is the spec. So if a piece of RAM is meeting spec, its first word latency is always going to be 10 nanoseconds. So you can see our pattern now. 32 pairs with 16 cast latency. 34 pairs with 17. 36 pairs with 18. And here is that exact calculation. We are taking the cast latency, dividing it by the RAM speed, and then multiplying it by 2000. That's how you get your actual calculation there. If something is below spec, that's poor RAM. If something gives you 10 for nanoseconds, again, that is at spec. Anything less than 10 is going to be actually pretty good RAM, and you might want to consider it. But there's other numbers on here. So here's another example. Now, this comes from G-Skills website. The first thing that you're going to see when you look at this is, ooh, it has RGB. Ooh, that, that's obviously a gaming set of RAM, right? Well, not always. Be careful now. We're looking at our speed first. We have 3,600 megahertz, so that's good. 
that's good speed. We have our cast latency here at 16. Do our calculation, do our formula, 8.8 .8 nanoseconds. That's perfect. That is, that is faster than spec, and that's what we are aiming to get. Now next, you'll see two additional numbers. Now these are often paired together, row latency and pre-charge latency. You don't have to worry about what those are right now, but what I want you to notice is 16, 16, 16, that's a one to one to one ratio. When we start talking about overclocking RAM, overclocking is trying to get that clock speed higher. When we talk about tightening RAM, tightening RAM is trying to decrease this amount of cast latency so our first word latency decreases but we also want to make sure that these other three numbers are in alignment so these are the first two that you're making sure are in a line so if you can achieve one to one to one that's considered as tight as you can get so ideally you're bringing down this cast a little bit and being able to reduce your row latency and your pre-charge, and that's ultimately gonna give you tighter timings with less latency. Now there's one other number, and right here it is, this 36. This is called the row active time. Ideally, ideally, row active time should be row latency plus cast latency. So in this instance, if I were to tighten these timings, I would try to get this at 32. The stock setting here is 36. Now that is not uncommon. Oftentimes you are going to see that there is a four additional latency added into that calculation for row active time when you look at these modules. But if you are trying to tighten things up, this is one of those places we can do it. We can drop this down to 32 now that's, that is just about as tight as we can get. So that's how you actually read this information. So what's, what is my recommendation for you? If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegrayingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. You can go out, you can read the reviews. There's a lot of talk about this, but pretty consistently, this right here is considered the best price to performance ratio right now for gaming. 3,600 megahertz, 16 cast latency, ideally this 16, 16, 16 sub-timing ratio, the one to one to one. You're looking for Samsung B die. This is very high quality RAM that is very coveted because it can take a lot of extra volts and return a lot of extra performance outside of just what the box says it can do. Lastly, you're only looking for two DIMMs. A gaming system is going to work better with two DIMMs. I know there's four slots, but it's actually gonna perform better if you only fill two of those slots. So if we go back over here to our G-Scale website, you can see this meets every single one of our qualifications, except it's hard to actually see the manufacturer of the RAM itself. So I want you to copy this, and there's an additional website that you can go to. And if you come over here to BDI Finder, this is on GitHub, you can enter your model number in right here and it will tell you what's the actual information. And you can see here, BDI guaranteed, it is a black and white, it is 36 with that 16 cast latency. There's our first word right there, 16 gigs on two sticks and this is single rank. Now that is the last thing that you might want to consider. I'm ignoring that for now because I don't think that the conclusions are there yet. Some people say that if all of the memory is on one side of the PCB, you get better gaming performance. Other people say the exact opposite. I did a little bit of testing. I did find single rank to give me just a little bit of a boost, but it wasn't so much that it would scare me away from using a double ranked. However, I still would stick to only two sticks overall. So there you have it, there is your recommendation. I do particularly like these G skills. The RAM itself does not have RGB. I don't like RAM RGB because it typically makes you run a separate application in order to set it. And then if you reset your machine or lose power, it resets it too. 
it's, it's very annoying to kind of deal with. Instead, this gives you the option of taking off that white cover. You can put on a black or a red cover. I like that a lot better. So that's why I'm recommending these particular G skills. I think you're going to be very happy with this. However, you do have to be careful when you go to purchase. You can see here, this looks very similar to the RAM that I'm talking about. But if I change just the color, watch what happened to my overall timings and my cast latency. So you kind of have to be careful when you are selecting this set of RAM that you are looking for. You want 36 with 16 cast latency, and you can see we have a choice between black and white and silver and white, but make absolutely sure that these numbers are the ones that you are looking for. So current price for this is $130. $130 for 16 gigs of high performance gaming RAM is a great deal at this time. So now how do we put it in the system? Well, given the complexity of actually figuring out what RAM to get, installing it is miles, miles, and miles easier. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video.